Builders in the Void A Story by User Drunk Robot 97 Chapter 7 Yuri and Stell What do you think, Stell? The Remlin turned to his human opposite, his helmet hiding his look of calm worry. The plane they were overlooking was a wasteland, existing under a blanket of carbon dioxide five times as thick as on any civilization-spawning world. It was empty. A few track prints from human exploration trucks being the first hint of life in the billions of years since it was first forged. It was cold, too, down to 240 Kelvin. And this was the equator. The poles were worse, covered in dry ice. It is bleak, Yuri. Ah, the benefits of a self-regulating body temperature. If you took off that suit, you'd die, too. Not before you, Stell. Stelsom quietly thanked his suit for dutifully pumping boiling hot water through tubes laced throughout his underlayer. His species evolved under a close, reliable sun, and never became hot-blooded. It saved them from living with the constant ravenous appetites of, say, the humans, but they had trouble bringing their preferred conditions with them to other worlds and species. Yuri once told him about an ancient human tradition of rolling around naked in the snow to keep clean. Maniacs. But Stelsom was one of the more adventurous remlins, and the humans seemed like they could keep him on his toes. So he immigrated to the Alliance. It was on a visit to the newly completed Parliament Station that he met Yuri. Yuri had just finished his course in civil engineering, specialty next-gen infrastructure on colonial planets, and was billing for a post to Baikonur, a colony world about to go under heavy industrialization. The two made fast friends, and Stelsom, with his experience in the engineering corps, going to waste otherwise, decided to join him. So far, it had worked out well. Back home, jobs were few and far between. But the Alliance was screaming for workers, going under massive, decades-long expansion since first contact. Sharing a hab with Yuri and the generous salaries for essential work was lessening the costs for special cleaning facilities for him. Remlin were rare among the millions that lived on Baikonur. He was seeing new sights and meeting new people. Shame that the sights were of hell and the people were legitimately crazy. Nobody else in the galaxy would touch this world. Maybe a listening station in orbit or a small garrison to quickly deal with criminal presences. But no one would try to build a home here. Never mind a society to sustain billions. It was just too cold. Too much CO2. A simple piece of equipment failure could end anybody's life, either suffocating or freezing to death. Apparently, the humans didn't get the message. Stelsom and Yuri were part of a survey crew, taking samples of the area, figuring out what they'd need to make the targets of the Baikonur Council. They had to turn an outpost world, barely making a profit, into a center of industry and agriculture. With factories and farms laid across the entire planet to facilitate the ever-increasing amount of goods the Alliance was exporting to other races. Why are we here, Yuri? Why are you so infuriatingly happy to be here? Yuri turned, confused at his partner's pessimism, but quickly formed an answer. Still, what am I holding in my hand? Yuri raised the canister he was holding, straw still attached to his helmet. It's a can of nutrient paste supposed to taste of an animal you call a cow. Very good, Stell, that is correct. Now what do you see in front of you? Yuri waved his free arm at the view. Where are you going with this? What do you see, Stell? Ah, uh, I see a barren wasteland covered in snow. What I don't see is plants, animals, or any other sign of a place that is able to carry life. Also correct. Well done. Now imagine us standing here five or ten years from now. What will you see? I don't understand what... I'll tell you what you'll see. Up in the sky, you'll see lines stretching up to beyond your range of vision and a network of bright points of light. There'll be space elevators carrying people and goods en masse up and down from the surface. And gigantic mirrors, focusing light onto points on the surface, raising the local temperature. You know how there's enough iron in these planes to mess with our compasses? There'll be city-sized mines and factories, taking that iron and smelting, melting, alloying, and shaping it into all sorts of things, like tractors, kitchen appliances, and sheet metal. 
A mag rail will be cutting through the land with freight trains kilometers long, hauling all those things to the elevators and spaceports. The sheet metal will be bent and welded into hulls, inside huge new shipyards. Freighters rolling off the production line like sausages. They'll load the rest of the things made on the surface onto the new freighters, sending them off into the galaxy. Remember those tractors I told you about? Some of them will be sent off to the huge farms. Sure, right now, it's too cold. But those mirrors will melt the snow, leaving a nitrate-rich soil to accept the crops. Those crops will be the products of masterful genetic engineering, selected to grow fast and big in the coldest conditions. Eventually, the farms will be visible from space, replacing white with yellows and greens. Those crops will find their way into the newly bought kitchen appliances and millions of new homes, both on this planet and many others, feeding millions of new families. And do you know where I'll be, Stell? Where will you be? I'll be here, holding two cans of nutrient paste. Yeah, very funny, Yuri. Maybe I'll have a sky car to drink them in, or a well-endowed lady to drink them with, along with some other things, if you know what I mean. And this is all in five years? Yes. And idiots like you will make it happen. Damn straight. It's in my blood. My ancestors helped build an industrial superpower from a peasant country within a decade. That's what terrifies me. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. You're all wonderful, and I appreciate you. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Feed the algorithm. It requires energy. And, uh, yeah, have a great day, guys. Um, tell me, who is your hero? Who's your, who's your favorite person? Who's someone you, you know, model your life after? What do you, what do you like about them? What do you not like about them? How do you feel that they measure up um, to the ideal if you've actually met them? Anyway, guys, thanks again. I will talk to you later. I love you. Bye, y'all.